Hello, and welcome to Palmer Rx. In today's episode, we discuss the possibility for stroke prevention, and could aspirin have prevented a stroke with the famous actor Luke Perry? Well, yes and no. FDA has new guidelines. Luke Perry, famous actor for 90210, was born on October 11th, 1966, and he suffered an ischemic stroke and was put on life support, and then he passed away on March 4th, 2019. John Singleton, uh, the famous director for Boys in the Hood, was born on January 6th, 1968. He suffered a stroke, went into a coma, and then was put on life support and died on April 20th, 2019. So the FDA has new guidelines that we will discuss in this episode. But it has been known throughout the years that um, taking an aspirin a day can help prevent the reoccurrence of stroke and a heart attack in a person who's already had a heart attack or stroke. Okay, that's what the juice were. But the new guidelines are not saying that for people who've never had a stroke or a heart attack. According to the FDA, new guidelines the aspirin would not have helped. But this is very informative and I hope you enjoy this episode. Hello and welcome to Palmer Rx. Uh, today's topic we're gonna be discovering is stroke and uh, prevention for stroke. Um, recently, um, people have been asking us because due to the uh, actors like Luke Perry from 90210, age 52, died of a stroke, and uh, John Singleton, a 51-year-old director, died of stroke also. He was the director of Boys in the Hood. So it started hitting close to home, and um, we are basically here to answer the question. So I have my friend pharmacist Stephanie here. Hi. Okay. Hello. And um, so um, what is a stroke, basically? Oh, okay. So a stroke, um, there's two types. There's mm -hmm. ischemic and then there's hemorrhagic. So with ischemic, it's similar to a heart attack, um, except it's occurring on the brain. So blood supply is getting cut off to the brain, therefore a stroke. Now hemorrhagic is more where inside the blood vessels are bursting and it's bleeding inside. So 80% of most strokes occur through ischemic, like with these individuals. So people are now gonna be coming up saying, I'm worried about having a stroke or a heart attack, and they're gonna be asking about low dose aspirin. Right, right, so people have been saying, well, what? how can we prevent this? I mean, it just happens out of a sudden. So what kind of aspirin were people supposed to be taking? So before we used to tell everyone, yeah, if you're diabetic, go ahead and take a baby aspirin. But now things have changed because of the risk of bleeding, GI bleeding. So now we look at patients who have a cardiovascular history, like, did you have a stroke? Did you have a heart attack? Do you have angina? Do you have cartary, uh, coronary artery disease? Um, if you say no to that, then you don't need an aspirin because the risk of GI bleeding is higher. Uh, what we would recommend for you is uh, lifestyle modification, exercise, uh, uh, changing your diet, controlling your glucose if you're diabetic, okay? So we work on lifestyle modifications for those patients. Who, should, who are the people who should be taking aspirin? Okay, so okay. you had a heart attack, you need to stay on aspirin, okay? okay. Uh, you had a stroke, you need to stay on aspirin. You have angina, the chest pain, you need to stay on aspirin. And if you have coronary artery disease, Mm -hmm. You need to stay on the baby aspirin. So the baby aspirin is an 81 milligram um, dose of aspirin. Okay, and that's what's recommended. Now, for the other patients who are diabetic or at risk for CV, we don't recommend it because of GI bleeding. Um, you know, that is a concern. GI bleeding, you're like, oh, well, what are the symptoms of GI bleeding, right? So GI bleeding you mean, means like you're... What part of the body is that, just to be clear for the people? Okay, so GI is <laughs> just, it's, it's like your gut, your stomach, your lower uh, intestine. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Yes, um, your upper, so stomach pain, uh, vomiting, um, dark stool, blood in the stool. Your stool comes out like coffee granules. Then you think, oh, 
we have GI bleeding. You gotta call your doctor right away. Oh, okay, okay, so that's a mm -hmm. risk. So the, the there's the 81 milligram chewable, mm -hmm. 81 milligram enteric coated, mm -hmm. and th those are avail those are options are available. Mm -hmm. And based on what you're saying, which one would be better? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. No, it doesn't matter. Okay. All right. And so um, uh, we were we were just informed um, that there's been new guidelines that have just come out. So mm -hmm. that's why you're getting the newest information here, May 2019. Yes. Um, so. So, what are the new guidelines so, on aspirin? Anyone taking aspirin? What is the guideline? Okay, so mm -hmm. the the new guidelines by the American College of Cardiology and the American Heart Association is for patients to take the 81 milligram uh, aspirin only if they fill, fall into that four criteria, which I said was heart attack, stroke, angina, and coronary artery disease. Um, if you don't fall into those, it's not recommended, you know, so patients cannot just pull aspirin off the shelf and take it every day like they were before. Before, all diabetics were recommended to be on baby aspirin, mm -hmm. 81 milligram, you know? So things have changed. And then you also have concerns about drug interactions too. So it, you have to talk to your doctor, okay? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Always talk with your doctor. Okay, what next? Okay, so... Number one question I typically get from patients mm -hmm. are drug interactions. Oh, yeah, th that's a good point. So am I gonna get a drug interaction? What do I need to worry about when I'm taking aspirin? Okay, so a lot of patients who are on aspirin are on NSAIDs. So mm -hmm. uh, NSAIDs are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory uh, drugs like uh, naproxen, Aleve, mm -hmm. uh, ibuprofen, Motril, and Advil. Um, these increase your risk of bleeding along with the aspirin, the GI bleeding. So that's a concern. However, together, if you do fit in the criteria of cardiovascular disease, it's going to decrease your um, risk of, of anticoagulating. Okay. Right. Or right. preventing a blood clot. Okay. So they have to be aware. So I always tell the patients, well, you're, you had a heart attack. You're taking the aspirin, this ibuprofen. I understand your ankle's swollen, but you can't be on it long term. It's going to affect the, the effectiveness of the aspirin. It's going to decrease the effectiveness of the aspirin. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. So, yeah. So from my knowledge, the, mm -hmm. the way aspirin works is, you know, you, you build like, you know, it's an anticoagulant. Thing. So when you bleed, you get, you know, that uh, scab, things mm -hmm. like that. And that also happens throughout your arteries, correct? Mm -hmm. And so what this does, aspirin is, does is it stops that clotting factor, which you have a tube, mm -hmm. it, which is your arteries, you know, your blood. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they get smaller and smaller because they're, they're bogged up with that jelly looking mm -hmm. uh, coagulation. Now this doesn't, this prevents that from coagulating so it keeps it flowing yeah which is very important for a stroke because that that coagulating gel breaks off yes and travels up the smaller tube and blocks it like this yes. so, it's so you blocked. get clots where you don't want them yeah yeah and then that's where the stroke happens so and then if it's by the heart cutting off blood flow to a heart that's a heart attack okay what? so omega-3 people are on omega-3 right. for their heart for their cholesterol well you're also on aspirin and you're on ibuprofen that increases your risk of bleeding all three of those okay and then you're on coumadin or warfarin a blood thinner that really increases your risk of bleeding. So it's a concern. You cut your finger and it doesn't stop bleeding. Right. That's a concern. You get injured in an auto accident. Mm -hmm. Now they can't, they don't know what's going on. You won't stop bleeding. You mm -hmm. can te technically bleed to death. And that's yeah. what, you know, I'm not, we're not saying people are going to get in auto accidents, but we're saying is that's mm -hmm. the concern. So your concern is just don't grab anything off the counter. Talk to your doctor, talk to your pharmacist. Just because it's over the counter doesn't mean it's safe for you. All right, uh, you know, another over the counter one is this buffered aspirin stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it has, what is there anything great with that? The buffered yeah. aspirin? Yeah. Well, a lot of patients want the enteric coated, they think it's easier on the stomach. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it the really studies doesn't. say it doesn't really matter. Uh, the, the science behind it is that the enteric coated aspirin passes through your stomach into the intestines mm -hmm. and therefore you know it's supposed to cause less um, um, chance of getting like an ulcer meaning a hole in your yeah. stomach where you know burning your lining mm -hmm. over time so that's the theory behind it and then I have a lot of patients who are on antidepressants 
um, yeah. serotonin um, reuptake inhibitors, Zoloft or sertraline or uh -huh. paroxetine, fluoxetine, Prozac. That, along with the aspirin and the ibuprofen, does increase your risk of GI bleeding. So, you know, that's something to consider. No, 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 definitely yeah. every, everything to consider. Yeah, so. I mean, who would have thought that aspirin, you know. Interacting with your yeah, antidepressants. It's, yeah, it's, it's a good thing. You know, I, growing up, I took aspirin only, you know, when I had a headache, right? Mm -hmm. Two aspirins, you know. Yeah, and then also aspirin is bad for kids. And for children. Right. Anyone under 16 should not take aspirin unless told, instructed by the doctor, because we worry about Rice and syndrome, oh, yeah, which can be deadly. Deadly, deadly. So yes. here you are, Rice syndrome. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. anyway, anything else that you could think of that new with the, that's come up with aspirin? Well, also maybe reevaluating, like us as pharmacists, um, reaching out to the doctors, this patient doesn't have the risks. Um, they have risks of CV, but they've never experienced a heart attack or stroke or don't have angina or uh, coronary right, right, disease. Right. That's Us nice. reaching out to prescribers, informing them of the new guidelines, um, because we don't want patients at risk for bleeding. This person doesn't need the aspirin, but they really need their antidepressant. So, and you know, patients aren't aware of these drug interactions. Like, hey, I've been taking. Um, Escitalopram for years and no one told me it interacts with my aspirin. So that right, is right, a concern. Right, 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 They're like, right. wow, I will definitely check my stool. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. yeah no. Everyone should go check their stool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I think we covered everything um, for this. Uh, if you have any more questions or anything, mm -hmm. you could, you know, put it on our comments. Definitely mm -hmm. like the video if you do. Uh, be a subscriber. And um, you could have comments for pharmacist Stephanie or me, Amr, and I, we hope to catch you in our next video. Mm -hmm. Have a good day Thanks. and stay healthy.